Hello, this is CJ Hoyle, and welcome to day one of my solo canoeing adventure on the Trent Severn Waterway. Today is Saturday, August 29th, 2020, and this morning I was dropped off here on the eastern shore of Lake Simcoe, just north of Beaverton, right at the mouth of the canal. My goal for today is to paddle this canoe in the northeast direction to the Kirkfield Lock Station, which is about 20 kilometers away. The route will begin with a straight narrow section of man-made canal, which includes three locks. Beyond here, the canal opens up into the Talbot River, where there are two more locks to go through. Eventually, the river widens, and the route continues through Canal Lake, which has an island in the middle of it. At the end of the lake, there's another man-made canal, which leads to the Kirkfield Lift Lock, where I'm heading today. The weather forecast is calling for a 40% chance of showers, and just as I was pulling away, I could feel a few light raindrops. Out in the lake where I started, the wind felt pretty strong, but the canal seems pretty well sheltered from it. So the time is about 8.30, and I have about two kilometers to paddle before I get to the first lock. All right, so I've traveled about 1.5 kilometers so far, and so far I have the canal entirely to myself, no other traffic, and completely calm and still, and you know, no wind. Uh, it was raining briefly, but that's already stopped. Uh, it's really the perfect morning to start a trip like this. The road bridge that I can see up ahead is Highway 12, and I think I can see somebody on top of the bridge watching me. These clips, of course, were filmed by my dad, who after dropping me off this morning drove ahead to the first log station to watch me paddle past. As I approach the bridge for Highway 12, there I can see him standing on top of the bridge. So just beyond Highway 12 is Lock 41 Game Bridge. The lock doesn't open until 9 a.m., so I had a few minutes to wait, but then they opened up the gate and I paddled inside. Since this is my first time ever taking a canoe through a lock, I had a few questions to ask the staff. They instructed me to fasten the canoe towards the back of the lock, since the front of the lock will be turbulent when they're filling it. All right, so I'm in the lock now and they've opened the fill valve, so this will be hoisting me up to the top level. Lock 41 Gamebridge was constructed in the early 1900s and has a lift of about three and a half meters. More than a hundred years later, the gates and valves are still operated manually by the muscle power of the lock staff. Once the gate was open, I exited the lock and proceeded my way further up the canal. So that last lock back there was called Game Bridge, and not far down the canal, I've now reached the next lock, which is called Thora. So another lock complete, and the next one's not too far away either. Here I've reached my third lock. This one's called Portage. So for a while there I was enjoying some sunshine, but it looks like some dark clouds have rolled in overhead. All right, so another log complete. The next one's a little bit further away. Those three were pretty close together, but uh, there's a bit more of a gap before I get to the next one, which is called Talbot. The time is currently just after 10 a.m. All right, so it's now 10.23 and I've traveled six kilometers so far. And you can see that the canal has opened up here because I'm now at a portion of sort of the natural water course of the Talbot River. Um, I apologize if you can hear some wind in the background. Uh, that's because the wind has picked up a bit, and as you can see from the ripples on the water, the waves are actually going in my direction, so I have the wind behind me, which will, for me, be a very good thing. Maybe for the video viewer, it won't be the best. All right, so I'm just pulling up to uh, Talbot Lock here, and there's a roadway bridge that I'll be paddling underneath of. All right, so there's my fourth lock completed. I have one more to go to get through. It's not too far from here. Uh, I have not yet seen any other boats at all in the canal. Um, I spoke to the lock master back there and he said that uh, there was only one other that was ahead of me and that apparently there's no others behind me at least uh, according to, you know, they, I guess they call each other and, and tell each other, let each other know what's sort of coming up and down the, the canal system. But uh, apparently nothing coming from behind and nothing coming from in front. So uh, it should continue to be a really nice quiet day. Now that I'm out of the narrow canal, and into the natural river, I'm noticing more and more cottages on either side. All right, so here I'm arriving at yet another lock. So this one here is called Bulls Over, and it seems to be the largest of any of the locks I've gone through so far today. And now here we are, almost at the top of the lock. All right, so with lock 37 now complete, I will not have any more locks until I get to my destination, where I'll be camping at a lock station tonight. Um, so it'll be a lot of just 
open water. Uh, looks like there's a swing bridge up ahead that I'll be going underneath it. So underneath that big black cloud is uh, the Boundary Road Bridge 44, which is a swing bridge. It would certainly be fun to watch them operating the bridge, but uh, not really gonna bother asking them because my canoe is definitely not too tall to fit under. I'm noticing lots more cottages in this part of the river too, but I still haven't seen a single other boat on the water. All right, I've made it to another swing bridge. This is bridge number 43, Bulls Over. I think that Balsover is actually the correct pronunciation for that word, but maybe someone can confirm that for me. So here's where the Talbot River opens up and becomes Canal Lake. So I paddled 12 kilometers now, and before I paddle across Canal Lake, I've decided to take a break for lunch, because the time is now just after 12 noon. So I've pulled the canoe up over here on beside this concrete pad, and that concrete pad is supporting this big giant triangle thing. So I'm gonna stop here and have some lunch. I've got some leftover pizza that my parents gave to me to eat. And I'm uh, just gonna take a nice little break before I brave those big waters of a much bigger lake than what I've been paddling in so far. There's a better look at my lunch spot. And with that wind picking up, I'm really looking forward to having it pushing me across this lake. I'm sorry about the wind, but at the same time, I'm also not sorry because man, it just pushing me exactly where I need to go. I'm not even paddling right now, and I'm already going four kilometers per hour. To me, this lake seems quite big compared to what I was paddling in earlier, but it's actually really just sort of a medium-sized lake, and it's actually very shallow. You can see, I've pretty much been able to see seaweed growing from the bottom pretty much the whole way along. So I've just about reached the target that I've been shooting for for the last half hour or so. This is one of the two bridges that you can go under to get to the other half of Canal Lake. There's a kind of an island in the middle there, and I believe there's another bridge over on the other side of it, uh, but through there, that's where the other half of Canal Lake is. The bridge looks pretty modern, but the date up there says 1905. So the wind is just as favorable over on this side of the lake, although it seems to be starting to rain a little bit. You can see that it's most likely raining over in that direction. But it's never really amounted to too much when it's rained today. It's just been a few drops here and there. All right, well, this is definitely more rain than uh, I've been experiencing so far. But uh, no problem, I got everything sealed up nicely inside waterproof bags. So the rain was fairly short-lived. It's now stopped again. That's kind of how the weather's been today. You know, it'll, it'll be really sunny for, you know, 15 minutes and then it'll be really cloudy with, you know, a lot of wind again. Uh, and then it'll rain for a little bit too, but uh, back to just wind and uh, no rain. All right, so I pretty much reached the end of Canal Lake now, and it funnels back into a canal up ahead somewhere. The wind was really strong on that lake, and it really, very lucky that it was in my favor. If it was going the other way, I really don't know whether I would have been able to make any headway whatsoever. Uh, when I was heading over this way, I accidentally ended up over on the other side of this land right here, and then I had to backtrack directly into the wind, and man, that was... That was really difficult. All right, so here I am back in a canal again, and this leads to Kirkfield, which is where I'm heading. That's my ultimate destination for today. And beyond there, it'll eventually take me to Balsam Lake. And just like that, there's my destination for today. This is the Kirkfield lift lock. Quite a bit different from the other locks that I was in because this one is a hydraulic lift lock. All right, so I'm going to go into the lock and I'm gonna ride it up from this level down here all the way up to the level where that tub is up there. All right, so I'm all loaded in the lock and you can see back there, they're closing the gate. All right, so that's fully closed now and they've locked it in place. All right, so here we go. You can see that my side of the lock is slowly climbing up and the one above is slowly starting to climb down very slowly. Now we're really moving. This feels a lot like being in an elevator. All right, now the top gate is opening up. You can see some water flowing in as the water levels equalize. All right, so they said that my campsite is just over this way. 
So luckily I'll be able to camp at the top of the locks and I don't have to worry about getting my canoe up here to start my day tomorrow morning. All right, so I've got my tent set up here and the campsite is really close to the canal over there, although I don't have it entirely to myself. Um, I think I'm pretty sure I'm the only person that's actually camping here, but there's lots of people that are just sort of visiting for the day. So uh, I've kind of got my stuff sort of stashed over in this corner. So I've got my, my tent there and I've got my canoe stored over here. And just to be safe, I do have a bike lock, so I have it locked up to the picnic bench behind it. It's kind of an interesting campsite because it's sort of placed here in this utility area that the canal uses. Uh, so beside me, there's this big package, which I believe is full of the big plastic, the things that they put to stop boats and people swimming and things from getting sucked into a dam. There's also stuff over there, some stuff relating to, uh, I guess, the locks themselves. And there's this big old boiler here. Very old. And then there's a big, of course, big pile of firewood over here. Some kind of truck box or cap or something over there. There's this old boat, the Trent Ottawa. And then there's, you know, more floaty, uh, things, buoys, and then there's like, I guess some buildings over there that are related to probably where they store other stuff indoors. And there's this uh, boat in the water here called the Trent Scow number four. So my campsite is located over there at the very end of this concrete walkway, but the actual lock is located way back over here. So I'm gonna go for a walk and take a closer look at the lock. Completed in 1907, Lock 36 Kirkfield lifts boats by a height of 15 meters. It consists of two giant water tubs, which are each supported by their own massive hydraulic cylinder. These two cylinders are connected together, such that when one tub goes down, the other tub gets pushed up. The two tubs are built to the same dimension so the masses are balanced, but they always add one additional foot of water to the top tub, so that it will go down and the other one will go up when they open the crossover valve. So an advantage of a lift lock is that they're typically able to lift boats by a much higher height than a conventional lock. And another advantage is that they're also able to take boats in both directions. So when, you know, a load of boats is going up, another load of boats can be being lifted down. The Kirkfield lift lock gets its name from Kirkfield, Ontario, which is about three kilometers up the road from it. So I've decided to go for a walk tonight to go and explore it. I really don't mind that the walk is kind of far, it was kind of nice having a change of scenery. No CJ Hoyle trip video through farmland would be complete without some cows. All right, so here's the little community of Kirkfield, which is part of the municipality of Kawartha Lakes. So since their little convenience store, grocery store was still open, I decided to make a stop there and get some stuff. So one of the sights to see in Kirkfield is the plaque for Sir William Mackenzie, who was born here and he uh, had, a, had a successful career in building railways here in Canada. And uh, so he was born in Kirkfield and this is the house over here that uh, he built for himself. So before I head back to the lock, I'm gonna stop in here at Tailor Made Fries to have something to eat. So I placed my order now and while I wait for it to cook, I'm gonna eat this apple because I figured I probably should eat at least one thing that was healthy today. All right, so my food is ready and here it is. I decided to get a large poutine. They had something on their menu called a Nufi poutine, which I was interested to try, but unfortunately they didn't have the ingredients to make it right now, but they said they'll have it next weekend. So if you're in Kirkfield on the Labor Day long weekend, be sure to uh, try out the Nufi poutine. All right, well now that my meal is complete, I'll begin my journey back to the lift lock. So it started raining again, which is really just the theme of today, I think the uh, catchphrase for day one is going to be, it started raining again. <laughs> All right, so I've made it back to the lock now, and uh, I'm going to use the restroom building here, and then I'll head back to the campsite. So here I am up at the top of the lock, and here you can see what one of those big giant bathtubs looks like. And then the operators sit in that little control area right there. And I was also reading this sign here, which 
reminds me that Kirkfield, which is where we are right now, is the summit of the Trent Severn Waterway. I've also heard that called the home port in that it's kind of the middle point where water, you know, if you go on one side of it, flows downhill to one water body. And if you go on the other way, water flows downhill to another water body. All right, so I made it back to my campsite and all those people who are here sort of wandering around have left, but these two boats have shown up. So I guess they're gonna be mooring pretty close to where I'm camping. And unfortunately one of them has a gasoline generator running, which I really hope they're not gonna run all night long. All right, so before I get into my tent, I will prepare my campsite overnight oats for my breakfast tomorrow morning. If you've watched other CJ Hoyle videos, you'll probably be familiar with this, at least if they were my uh, bike touring videos. All right, so I'm inside my tent now and just sort of wanted to uh, sign off for the day. Hopefully you can hear my voice over top of the loud, noisy gasoline generator that my uh, neighbors unfortunately are running. Um, but um, yeah, so today I paddled a total of about 22 kilometers, which is uh, by far the furthest I've ever solo paddled before in a canoe. Um, leading up to this trip, I really wasn't sure, uh, you know, how these distances were going to go. Like I knew that it was going to be pretty far and a lot of hours of paddling um, each day. Um, but by all accounts, I was quite pleased by uh, how, how things worked out for me uh, today. Um, I will say that uh, I think having the wind behind me really did um, you know, make a big difference and I was really lucky to have it. So tomorrow I have uh, 24 kilometers uh, to do, so a little bit more uh, than what I had today. Um, so, you know, it'll be challenging also. Um, hopefully the wind is favorable, um, but I, I think that the wind was just particularly strong today and I think even, a, you know, a light wind, even if it's against you, won't make, you know, quite, a, quite as big a difference as uh, what I had uh, with me today. But anyways, that's just a quick summary of the day. I'm really having a good time uh, so far on, on day one and looking forward to day two. Um, and I hope you enjoyed joining me for day number one as well. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. And thanks for watching.